Luke's Bagels charges the same price to all consumers, although he could offer a discounted price to senior citizens and increase profit. The demand for senior citizens is given by QS equals 30 minus 2PS. The demand for other customers is given by QO equals 10 minus 0.5PO. So because they have different demands, if we charge them different prices, we would increase our profit. Luke's cost function is given by C of QS plus QO equals 20 plus 4 QS plus QO plus 0.05 QS plus QO squared. How much profit could Luke make if he charged different prices to senior citizens and other customers? So if he successfully price discriminated, how much profit could he make? So right now we have demand, which is Q on the left and P on the right. We need inverse demand. So we, we add 2PS to each side and we subtract QS from each side and then we divide through by 2 and we see that the price of seniors is equal to 15 minus 0.5 times the quantity of seniors. Same thing for other customers. We add 0.5 PO to each side and we subtract QO from each side and then we divide through by 0.5 and we find that the price of other customers is equal to 20 minus 2 times the quantity of other customers. Now we're ready to write profit. Profit in this case is going to be the total revenue of seniors plus the total revenue of other people minus the total cost. So let's look at the revenue side of that. Total revenue of seniors is given on the left. Total revenue of other people is given on the right, just price times quantity of each, minus the total cost of the combined customers. Now that we have profit, let's take the derivative with respect to one variable. So first, let's take the derivative of the profit function with respect to QS. The 15 minus 0.5 QS times QS becomes 15 minus 1 QS. The second part, the quantity and price of other customers completely drops out because there is no QS variable. Now we go to the cost function. The negative 20 drops out. The negative 4 QS turns into negative 4 while the negative 4 QO drops out. And that last term, we're, we're going to use the chain rule, which says we can bring down the exponent to the front. So 0.05 times 2 gives us 0.1. And then we have to take the derivative with respect to our variable on the inside. And in this case, that's just one. So we rewrite QS plus QO, and we see on the right side on the outside, we have just one. So be careful there, because sometimes it may not be that easy. But in this case, it just disappears. We can now combine like terms and start to solve for as best as we can. Notice that we're gonna have two variables in this function. So we're gonna have to do this process twice and have two systems of equations and use substitution to solve for each variable. We combine like terms to get 11 minus QS minus 0.1 QS minus 0.1 QO. Further, we can add 0.1 QO to each side and combine the QS's. Now we're ready to divide through by 0.1 QO to solve this as best as we can for one of the variables. And we find that QO is equal to 110 minus 11 QS. Now we're ready to take the derivative of the same profit function with respect to the different variable, which in this case is QO. We take the derivative and we find it to be 20 minus 4 QO minus 4 minus 0.1 QS plus QO all times 1. So we can combine like terms and start to solve as best as we can. Again, we're going to have two variables and that's okay because we have already solved for a function representing QO, which we'll be able to substitute and solve. So now we have 16 minus 4.1 QO and we add 0.1 QS to each side. So now it's equal to 0.1 QS. We can divide through by 0.1 and we find that we can solve just for QS as best as we can, which is 160 minus 41 QO. Now that we have both of these um, derivatives solved as best as we can, we can use substitution to solve. So it doesn't matter which one you want to use, but I'm going to do it this way. So 110 minus 11 times QS equals QO. But instead of QS, I'm going to plug in my function for QO, for, for QS in terms of QO. So we can distribute through that 11 and start to simplify. And now we only have QO as our variable, so we'll be able to successfully solve for QO. We get 1650 is equal to 450 QO. Dividing through by 450, we see that QO is equal to 3.6 repeating. In these problem sets, it's very important for you to not round because it's going to give you a wrong answer. 
So hold out to at least five or six decimals. And you have multiple attempts, so if you're getting really close and you're just barely missing it by one integer, know that it's probably a rounding error. You round somewhere where you shouldn't have. So we're gonna, I'm gonna just gonna keep this in my calculator as 3.666 repeating. Now that I have QO, finding QS is pretty easy because QS is just a function of QO. So from the top, we see 160 minus 41 QO equals QS. We can just plug in the 3.66 repeating and find QS. When we do that, we find that QS is equal to 9.6 repeating. We're now ready to find profit because we remember our profit function is just a function of QS's and QO's. So everywhere you see a QO and a QS, you plug it in, remembering not to round, and we find that then you can solve for profit.